Chair, Chair and I recognize Mr. Garcia for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, thank you, um, Dr. Califf. I appreciate you being here and all your work and the work of the FDA. Uh, I was going to talk a little bit about a different topic, but I just want to clarify some of the truly insane uh, attacks uh, on vaccines and just what happened during the pandemic that we heard a little bit earlier today, uh, which I found to be really wild. I, I just want to reiterate that during the pandemic, we lost 1.3 million American lives. Uh, in my city alone, we lost almost 1,300 lives uh, back home in California in, in the city of Long Beach. And we know that many of the folks that we lost would have lived if they had had access to the vaccine or had been vaccinated. We know that for a fact. Uh, we know the success of vaccines, and certainly today with more data, we know how effective they've been. What's concerning now, as we know, is as early childhood vaccinations are reaching new lows. We're having other diseases come forward, like measles and other uh, diseases that we are now not addressing because all of this vaccine denial that is happening, um, unfortunately, not just across this country, but also here in Congress and in this chamber. Vaccine hesitancy outside of what happened to COVID-19 is going to cause this country great harm. And instead of doing the responsible thing, earlier today we had uh, folks on the other side attack vaccines with, in my opinion, conspiracy theories and with treatments that we know are ineffective and have shown not to, not to work. Uh, we also know this is not just a matter of personal choice. Across the country, there are millions of people who don't have the choice, and who, can, who cannot get vaccinated because they might be too young, they might, they might be immunocompromised, or have other underlying health conditions. And so America's high vaccination rates is something that has helped our country for so long that the FDA has been so involved with, and it's very concerning that our vaccination rates and our vaccine process is being attacked. I also want to, to note that there, is, um, there have been um, comments made uh, over and over again about vaccines, about somehow vaccines causing turbo cancers or vaccines causing miscarriages or that the COVID va vaccine somehow um, has um, no effect on healthy people that are all false. And I know that you uh, know this, your team knows this, and I just want to re reiterate that for, uh, for the public. What, what I did want to say, and I, I have less time to do so, but I want to just to transition and just thank you and your team for what you're doing as it relates to listening to the LGBTQ plus community. Myself as an openly gay person, um, I really appreciate the FDA's uh, move and decisions um, allowing um, particularly gay men to be a part of the solution when it comes to health, when it comes to blood donations, when it comes uh, to, other, to other forms of uh, of, of surrogacy, um, the FDA has really stepped forward, and especially on the recent change in guidelines um, as it relates to LGBTQ plus Americans and gay men being able to donate blood. I think that as a gay person, it's comforting to know that if there was an emergency where my blood or other blood was, was needed, that we would have that same right. And thanks to all of you. Um, Dr. Califf, in the time I have remaining, could you describe the FDA's da draft proposal and how this helps advance equality while also expanding the donor pool as relates to the recent uh, changes you guys have all, you're all making. All right, simply, uh, first of all, let me just say, I appreciate your comments. Just back on the vaccines, I can't strike, I just one point I wanna make, um, all medical interventions have risks as well as benefits. We, in the earlier discussion, if you wanna be alive and not be in an intensive care unit, you're better off getting vaccinated. There are some people that have side effects. I just want to note that because it's um, important to take care of those people also. But the benefits far outweigh the risks. Simply put, the question that you asked, uh, people had raised this issue about donation for many years, and we did a study which showed that a questionnaire about behavior can do much better than just the time-based thing um, related to um, the LGBTQ community. So. Um, we we uh, are well along in that now, and um, it looks like it's really going to work, and we'll be consistent with what other countries are doing. So we're really glad we were able to come to this conclusion. Great. Well, thank you very much for your work and, and for your team's work. I yield back. Chair, now recognize Mr. Fry. 